Ecom 3313 Microwave Engineering Lecture 5 Generator and Load Mismatch on Transmission Line Right, up until this point, we have focused primarily on the terminated transmission line that is lagged with a specific excitation, meaning that we did not consider the voltage source. So in this lecture, we are going to complete our review on the transmission line by adding a voltage source together with an arbitrary load. So refer to the figure here. Before, we are only talking about the transmission line and also the load, which is ZL. So load can be anything. It could be an antenna. It could be an amplifier, a filter, and so on. Okay, so this one over here, these two lines, is your transmission line. So here, we are going to include the voltage source at the front, which is denoted by VG. Next, we have your V-in. So V-in is looking into the transmission line. So Z-in is here. And then I in will be here. So Z naught is your characteristic impedance, characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So usually the case would be 50 ohm or 75 ohms, depending on the situation. And then you have the reflection at the load, which happens here. Now, in previous lecture, we know that your reflection coefficient at the load is equal to ZL minus Z0 over ZL plus Z0. And you also have your VZ, which is equal to V0 plus, times with the exponent minus J beta Z plus the reflection, times with the exponent J beta Z. So we're going to assume that the physical properties of the transmission line, the source, and also the load are given. So now it only leaves with your V0 plus, which is an unknown quantity. So generally speaking, we compute the V0 plus by applying the boundary condition at the transmission line input. So we apply the voltage division. So you have V in is equal to Z in over Z in plus Z G times with V G. So refer to the figure here. V in will be Z in over Z in plus Z G times with V G. So observe that V in is an electrical circuit quantity. Now, you have enforced the boundary condition at the transmission line to be equation 5. So, V0 plus, finally, can be calculated by using this formula, where it is equal to Vg times Z in over Z in plus Zg. So, this would be the voltage divided that we have seen before, times with the exponent J beta L plus the reflection coefficient times with the exponent minus j beta L minus 1. Next, we have the maximum power. Because the transmission line is lossless, so the time average power, which is P average, delivered to the input of the transmission line should be equal the time average power delivered to the load. Okay, It should be the same. So we are going to consider three special cases for the P average in effort to maximize the quantity. So what, it, what would be the maximum power? So we are going to assume that your Zg is both non-zero and also fixed. So first case is when your load is matched to the transmission line. So when we say that the load is matched, so your ZL would be equal to the Z0. The impedance at the load 
should be equal to the impedance of the transmission line, which is the characteristic impedance. So when these two are matched, straight away you will know that the reflection coefficient is equal to zero because it is matched. So when it is matched, it also implies that your Z in will also be equal to the characteristic impedance. Okay? Then, when you say that your Z in is equal to Z naught, so R in should be equal to Z naught and X in should be equal to zero because it is purely reactive. There are no imaginary or reactants here. You don't have your plus J or minus J. So that's why you will have equation 9. So P average for a match load is going to be calculated by using equation 9. Second case is when your generator is matched to an arbitrarily loaded transmission line. Meaning that your Z in is equal to Z G instead of Z naught. Okay? And then your reflection coefficient now would not be equal to zero anymore. So specific values for beta L, Z naught and Z L would need to be chosen so that you will have Z in equal to Z G. So when you say your Z in is equal to Z G, so R in now would be R G and your X in would be X G. So by applying this to the previous equation, it will be simplified into equation 10 where your P average would be equal to V G squared over 8 times R G over R G squared plus X G squared. Finally, when your maximum power transfer theorem applied at the transmission line input. So when you have this case, Z in would be equal to the conjugate of your Z G. Okay? In this situation, your R in will equal to R G, but your X in will be equal to minus X G, which is the conjugate match. Because of this star signal, star sign here, sorry. And also, your reflection coefficient at the load would not be zero as well. So therefore, the P average or the maximum power for case 3 would be equal to Vg squared, the magnitude, over 8Rg. Now, from all these three situations, which one would provide the most time average power delivered to the load? So in this case, it will be the third one, which is this one. The maximum power transfer theorem applied at the transmission line input where your Z in is equal to the conjugate of Z G. Okay. In conclusion, to transfer maximum time average power to a load, we generally need to conjugate match the generator impedance to the transmission line input impedance. Next is about the efficiency. So efficiency is the percentage of the source power which is delivered to the load. So when you have your ZG is equal to ZL and also your Z0, the load and the source are both matched to the transmission line. However, only half of the source power is delivered to the load. So in this case, because it is half, the efficiency would be 50%. Okay. For a match line, that would be as good as it gets.